All right, now someone <clears throat> sent me this Ask Her Chanel, and it's one of those types of things that I really, really like. I like talking about cities, skylines, transit, that type of thing. And this is one of those talking about the Tacoma Link light rail system, right? Now, the name's a little controversial for some because they're saying it's not really a light rail. It is a streetcar. And this person said... Uh, hey Hirsch, what are your thoughts about the Tacoma Link, its expansion? Um, do you feel it's just a glorified streetcar uh, versus just a light rail? What are your thoughts? And I'm going to dive into that a little bit because it is a streetcar. You can't uh, couple them together. Coupling means you take two cars, two uh, train vehicles, and you're able to connect them together. Um, if you look at the Link light rail system up in Seattle, you're able to do that. You're able to actually couple those two cars together uh, or more than two. They actually have four running at a time and you can probably even link more than that, but their platforms are designed for four at a time. Street cars are not typically capable of being linked together. Now there are some, if you go to certain older cities, that you can link some of those. San Francisco has a streetcar, but it's kind of a light rail. Those can be uh, coupled together. But typically the answer is no. And a streetcar is a lot lighter. It's not as heavy as a true light rail train. Now it is classified as light rail because a heavy rail, for example, is a subway system or a um, commuter train, like a heavy commuter train. Um, and those commuter trains can look different, right? If you look at what the sounder is, it's a heavy commuter train. So they count that as heavy rail. So a streetcar is a form of light rail. Now, when you're breaking it down even more, typically a light rail system does not run in the center of traffic. Now that changes when you look at places like Denver and you look at Portland, their light rail trains run through city traffic. So that's kind of different. Um, typically, they are separate. They do not have, they don't share traffic with anyone. They run on their own tracks. Portland's unique because a lot of its streetcars cross over those heavy tracks of, the, of their light rail system. The streetcars can actually run on the max train light rail line, but the max uh, light rail line cannot go on the Portland streetcar system. And the reason why is because electric, the electric capacity is going to be different. And the other big important part, sorry, is the weight. So when they build a streetcar line, they don't have to dig as deep into the ground and build up all of the, the pavement and the infrastructure underneath to support the weight. The heavier the train, the more they have to actually do uh deeper cuts and construction and all that stuff that I don't quite know in detail, but it's different. So the rail bed is completely different. Uh, streetcar lines a lot lighter, so they don't have to dig as deep and therefore it's typically cheaper to build unless you're building it like they are in Seattle and they're costing $280 million a mile, which is crazy. But, so to answer your question, yeah, technically Tacoma Link is a glorified streetcar. The reason why they started it off the way that they did, I think, was because this was the first modern streetcar in the entire state of Washington. And so when Sound Transit proposed doing the streetcar system and they did the whole voting process back in the day, it was for people to say, okay, cool, we're going to have modern technology. And similar to SeaTac Airport, which back in the day, Seattle wanted to build an airport. They didn't have the money back in the olden days. So they had to ask for Tacoma's help financially. And Tacoma said, we'll help you financially pay to get this airport going, but our name needs to be in it. So that's why you have SeaTac, right? It has nothing to do with the city, SeaTac. That came after. SeaTac Airport is a combination of Seattle and Tacoma because both cities paid for that airport. This is similar in terms of Sound Transit. Sound Transit needed the financial might of Pierce County as well as Snohomish County in order to get this whole system running. 
It could be a, a complete Seattle system or a Kane County system, but essentially they would not, they would, it would be very expensive for the population. So they needed that extra couple million people to help pay for this project. As a result, they started down in Tacoma. Tacoma got the actual uh, light rail line first. Semantics are important because if you told them, hey, it's just gonna be a trolley or a streetcar, people probably would have thought a little bit differently. But it was termed light rail and it basically had its own dedicated line. Now that is smart because if you look at most of the line that exists currently today, it is separated from vehicular traffic. So therefore, it doesn't get bogged down and slowed down in traffic. If you look at Portland, for example, its light rail line and its streetcar system gets bogged down in traffic because it has to be in a lot of the pedestrian or a lot of the vehicle traffic lanes. Tacoma is a little bit different. Most of its track system is separated from everybody else. Now, with the extension, that's a little bit different because it's going to have to meander right into vehicle traffic, and so that's gonna probably slow things down. But their answer to that is basically more vehicles. The, the idea is if you have more vehicles, you can kind of cut that down a little bit. The big thing to remember is that when you're looking at a light rail line like what Seattle has and what we'll eventually get, down here in Tacoma is that the stations are typically about a mile apart or so or greater. Sometimes they're closer, but typically for a light rail line, those trains run pretty fast. So that's another big, a big distinction. Can't even talk is a streetcar. The stops are going to be every 2,500 feet or so, maybe even a little bit less. And the cars go at a maximum speed of 40 miles an hour. And that's pushing it. The light rail line goes much faster than that, and the stations are much farther apart, typically about a mile, sometimes even greater than that, maybe a little bit shorter than that if you have a really dense center of population. So the difference for us is that when you look at Seattle, those stations are spaced kind of far apart from one another, and so growth development focuses right in those areas right right in those nodes in seattle's case that works because the whole city is just dense uh when you're looking at smaller places like let's say charlotte north carolina it doesn't have the density that seattle has and even though they have light rail stations every so often you probably see some growth and development along those stations but you won't see a lot of things filling up in the middle in seattle for example between both stations so, for example, you know, now they've opened up three new stations in uh, Seattle. And Sound Trance is going to be opening up a new line for the next three years. So, next year it's going to be the extension here in Hilltop that's going to open. Then you're going to have Linwood and then Federal Way. So, for the next couple of years, Bellevue, all of those things are going to open up in the next few years. So, every year for the next three years, there's going to be a new line opening. And here in Seattle, not so much in Bellevue and these other places, but in Seattle specifically, between those two stops, so let's say the U District and Roosevelt, for example, there's so much density that you can build in between there. So there can still be a lot of high, tall buildings in between there because A, the city can support it, and B, it's easy for those people in the middle to be able to go to either one of those stations, right? The demand is so high. If you notice, if you look at our stations, if you go down there and just take a camera, most of the stations along, let's say if you go to Westgate all the way up to the University of Washington, most of those stations, you're going to have quite a few people queuing up, right? It's a very busy, busy station so or a very busy, busy line. And that just shows the density situation. Now, once you start to get farther and farther away, you're going to have less and less of that, right? Until you get to places eventually like Bellevue, or if you get into like Everett and specifically down in Tacoma, when that finally comes, you'll start seeing bigger pockets of people. But all these other places along the line, 
uh, like in South uh, Seattle, you don't really have a whole lot of people queuing up, right? It's just a stop. But in the urban part of the city, for sure, you have a lot of people. Now, here's the reason why the Tacoma Link is really special. And you have some people to say it's not that big of a deal. It's a glorified streetcar. That's true. However, it is leading to a massive amount of development down here in Tacoma. That streetcar line has led to most of the transit-oriented development, probably more of a success story than what you have up in Seattle. Um, there has been a massive push. If you look at a lot of the different projects, there have been, for, for example, Cozy is a company that builds only along uh, mass transit systems. So they have three apartment buildings that they've actually built here. Um, that's an example. There's a company out of Portland that's building two buildings because it's close to the light rail system. Um, there's a few others that their focus is because of that. And so they're literally following the system all the way up into Hilltop. So because of that, it has led to a massive amount of development. And because the Tacoma Link light rail is much slower and the stops are much more frequent and shorter, it's perfect for a urban environment like Tacoma because you can go to a cafe and then catch the, the system pretty quickly and go to your next stop. They're very short in between. If you miss a stop, you could probably walk down and get another one. For example, I, for some reason, the link was shut down because they were doing an expansion. They had stopped the trains. And I was able to literally walk the distance of about two or three stations back to the car. So it wasn't really that difficult or that challenging. So it's really a last mile. When you look at the streetcar, it's like a last mile type of system. So because of that, it allows people to get around downtown pretty easily without having to worry about getting back into your car and doing different things. So it, in that sense, it's actually a good win. It would be better if, if, the bus hub, the parking garage, the sounder train, and all that were more in downtown. That would be better, right? It would be a lot better. It would also be better if the Link Light Rail, the Line 1 or whatever it is, if it was built further into downtown. That would be better. But it isn't. It's more, it's all of the Dome District, right? Which is not bad. When you think about it, Tacoma is one of those rare cities. And Everett will eventually be the, the same thing. Only we have a little bit more rarity to us. We're the one rare city that has several different modes of transportation that are all connected into one area. We're the only city that has that much in one central zone. We have the... the Soon we're going to have a BRT line right there in the Dome District. We have Sounder Train, Amtrak. We have the Tacoma Link Light Rail. Soon we're going to have the uh, the Link Line 1 that's going to come down that connects right there. Greyhound Bus Station. All of those different modes of transportation in one area. There's not a city in the state that has that much concentrated in one particular area. So the Dome District... Is going to be on fire in the next few years, especially as we get closer to Sound Transit building a station down here. That's going to start getting ramped up pretty soon because in 2030, I believe, is when it's going to be constructed here and completed. So a lot of work is going to be going on in that area. Meanwhile, that area is going through a massive development phase. Developers know that Sound Transit's coming. So not only is it helpful that the Link Light Rail is going through the city and it literally takes you through a lot of different areas, different neighborhoods. See, a, a Light Rail line connects you to different points in the city. The streetcar connects you to many different little neighborhoods, right? So it makes everything just flow very well. And so because we have all of these different modes of transportation right here in Tacoma, it makes it a prime spot for development. And so that is a good thing. And that's why you're seeing the massive amount of development that's going on. And most of these uh, apartment developers don't have to provide any sort of parking. And the reason for that is because of the link light rail system. 
you have a massive parking garage over there in the Dome District that's free. 24-7, it's free. So it stops right there. So you can always park your car if you needed to or whatever and do what you got to do. Once Seattle does connect to us down here, it literally is just a walk over to either Amtrak or the Sounder or whatever you want to do or to the Tacoma Link and you're able to go throughout the city. So it, it makes it a much more realistic, great solution. Now, I don't know if Sound Transit knew that this was going to be a great success story, but it actually is. I mean, there has been people who have laughed at it and said, oh, it's a glorified streetcar and they like looking at Seattle's beautiful uh, light rail system and, and all of that. And they talk about the trains and all of that. And they make fun of the Tacoma Link. But to be honest with you, it is really, Seattle is trying to emulate what the Tacoma Link is. is. They're trying to emulate that. What's simple for Tacoma is if Tacoma really, if the leadership here really wanted to focus on inter-city development, downtown development, they would start adding to that light rail system. Sound Transit's already started most of it. Pierce Transit could easily add a few different lines throughout downtown, and that was one of the ideas that they had come up with back in the day, right? I think their focus right now is trying to, because population's grown so much all over the city, they're focusing on BRT, connecting BRT from some of these faraway places and bringing them into the city. Downtown right now, they're not focusing on building that network up too much. They're focused on the rest of the city, bringing all that in. Once that happens, they probably will revisit, potentially, the idea of adding more streetcars downtown because it just makes a lot of sense. There has been so much development because of that, because of the Link Light Rail, the Tunnel Link. There's been so much development because of it that it would make great sense for them to continue that. But who knows? But anyhow, yeah, I agree it is a glorified uh, streetcar. And even more so once the extension gets completed. But to be honest with you, it is a major, major economic driver. It has literally paid for itself. Right? Now, it may have taken a while, but it's literally paid for itself, especially now. So anyhow, hope I answered your question. Be sure to join the Discord down in the description box below. Make sure you like, share, subscribe, and comment. And until next time, I will see you. Take care.